Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. I'm Cantor Sarah Meyerson, and this is Ilyash Neves, and later we'll be joined by Rabbi Sam Weintraub. We're celebrating Shabbat tonight, of course. It's the first Shabbat after Pesach, which means we're now in the time of Sfirat Omer, counting the Omer. So we'll have one special melody in our tefillah tonight for that. The other lens that we're bringing to our tefillah tonight musically is that this is the Shabbat before Yom HaShoah, the commemoration of the suffering and destruction of Jewish communities, primarily in Europe, during World War II. Um, so the, many of the melodies that we'll be using tonight in our tefillah come from those communities, either folk melodies or uh, written by composers who grew up in those communities. We hope that that will be a meaningful experience for all of you, as it is for us. We continue on page 11 with Lechun Aranana. Lechun Aranana and we're going to sing together at the Red Triangle in Sidur Lev Shalem at uh, the end of Psalm 96. You'll see when we get to the second part of this verse, the sea in its fullness roar, the way that the composer has written this, there's room to make the roaring of the sea with our bodies. So you can clap your hands or stamp your feet or do whatever you do in your body to make the sea roar. Let's sing together. <laughs> turn to the bottom of page 16 and we're going to sing together the end of Psalm 97 beginning four lines from the bottom of the page. <laughs>
we turn to the bottom of page 18 for the end of Psalm 98. Lift near to Thy kingdom, is put our hearts. Is put the world beside One of the beautiful traditions of Eastern European, of Ashkenazi Jewish liturgical music, is this idea of taking the tefillot and really making musical midrash out of them, really exploring all of the nuance of the words and, and trying to communicate something through music about prayer. Uh, so we'll be pausing at this time for a little bit of chazonas, a little bit of musical exploration of the end of Psalm 99. You can follow along in the text on page 20 in Sidura Lev Shalem and just try and see where the music takes you in your imagining. Moshe Oh, my God. 
You may be seated. It's the first Shabbat after Pesach, which means we just started Sefirat HaOmer, counting the Omer, and there's a special melody for Lachado D for the period of counting the Omer. Uh, hopefully by the time we get to Shavuot, you'll know the melody super well. So we're going to sing that for the first half of Lachado D and then pivot to an Ashkenazi folk melody. It's customary to rise for the last verse, all those who are able, and to face either the door to the room or to the west where the sun is setting as we bow to welcome the Sabbath.
Page 28, the Psalm for Shabbat. Let's sing together eight lines from the bottom of the page, Sadiq Katamar. Psalm 93, Psalm for Friday, page 29. <laughs> Those mourning and those observing yard site continue with mourners Kaddish, 58. Yitgadal v'yitgada shemei rabba. Be'oma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayei chon uv'yomei chon v'chayei d'chol v'et Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevorach l'olam olomei olmaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnasei Yitadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shemei de Kudisha, Brichu. Leela, Minkol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, Da Amiran, Bioma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shlama, Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vechaim Alenu, Vialkon, Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose, Shalom, Bimromav, Hu Yaase, Shalom. Alenu v'alkon Yisrael v'imru, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we've just finished a Chag Pesach, and uh, I hope that your Passovers were all uh, joyous and healthy. Um, I know that mine, my seders especially, were uh, liturgically probably the most minimal they've ever been, but they were extraordinarily rich in gratitude, and I hope the same is true for you. Um, we now move on to Shavuot in seven weeks. Uh, as uh, many of you know, these two holidays are connected by a bridge, uh, ritually. Uh, every night we count the Omer, Svirah to Omer. We call this period sometimes simply Svirah, the counting. Uh, in the ancient world, it was marked by a ritual where the Israelite farmer came to the temple with an offering of barley, an Omer, which was about two quarts. Um, and that began a process of counting, Mimacharat Shabbat, basically the second day of Passover until Shavuot. Uh, we no longer have, uh, we're no longer farming barley, most of us in Israel, and we no longer have the temple. But over the last 2,000 years, the rabbis have given this holiday uh, other interpretations. First of all, in the Talmud, uh, they decided to fix the giving of the Torah to Shavuot. So the counting of Sfirah, mark sort of a process of moral and spiritual development as we went from our birth at Passover to religious maturity, the taking out of Torah and mitzvot at Shavuot. Uh, later on, um, with Kabbalah, Chassidut, uh, it took on a more personal uh, meaning. Uh, this became a time for sort of intense uh, 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 personal reflection on one's character and there were actually daily exercises, sort of mindfulness exercises that were attached to each of the 49 days so that a person could go through uh, individual moral refinement. So the question, of course, for us, for us is how we 
understand this today. What is the bridge that we are crossing today as we go from Pesach to uh, Shavuot? If you go back to the Torah narrative, you'll see that the first Passover, of course, began the 40-year wandering. And those uh, early years of our people were uh, difficult ones. And they are uh, often portrayed in pretty negative terms in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. Uh, apparently, we didn't have the uh, social maturity or the uh, emotional wherewithal or the spiritual enlightenment uh, to really uh, take on uh, right away the responsibilities of Torah and mitzvot. But there are two times in the text where the news is a little better, and I wanted to uh, look at the two of those tonight with you. Uh, two times when God and Moshe are actually very happy with the people. The first time is the, uh, when they finish constructing the Mishkan, the tabernacle in the desert, which was offered in atonement for the golden calf. Moshe and God are very delighted then, and we read at the end of the book of Exodus that God actually takes God's presence, uh, condenses it into a cloud. The cloud completely covers the Ohel Moed, the sanctuary, so that any Israelite from any vantage point anywhere in the camp can behold God's radiance. And the second time, I think, when Moshe and God, uh, Moshe in particular, are really delighted with the people is curiously a time which is a time actually of complaints and rebellions and even a plague, but Moshe has moments of happiness. Uh, during this time, it's in number, uh, Numbers chapter 11, uh, Moshe is very uh, burnt out with the leadership. He turns to God and he says, you know, uh, I, I want to give up. If it's going to be like this, I need some help in running these people. God shares of God's spirit to 70 trusted elders, Zikanim, and they are allowed to lead, to prophesy with Moses. Two men in the camp whose names are Eldad and Medad take on this responsibility of prophecy without apparently proper authorization. Joshua, Moses's a trusted aide and protector and lieutenant, is very upset by this and uh, complains to Moshe. But Moshe says, Umi ten kola am nevi'im. Would it be that all am Adonai, all of God's people, were prophets? Moses uh, is kind of delighted with this uh, turn of events. Even if it doesn't, if you will, have full authority, and even though it comes out of very exigent circumstances. So today we don't have the Mishkan, unfortunately. We don't have our sanctuary today. I'm not talking about the temple in Jerusalem. I'm talking about our sanctuary at 236 Kane Street, which we cherish. But temporarily, uh, we are in Galut. We are in exile from that, hopefully for not too long, but certainly for several months. Um, but uh, I think uh, we do have, and we can enjoy, the privilege and the burden of prophecy together. Uh, we need to try to understand in this period, especially as we're coming up to Shavuot, uh, what is it, uh, as the prophets would imagine, what is it that God cares about in this period? Uh, what is it that we are really called now to do? Uh, what, what is the dream, the vision that can unite our families, our community, our people, and help us move forward. I attended recently a rabbinic webinar with leaders from the Israel Trauma Center. They are wonderful people. I've met with them actually in Jerusalem a few times during difficult times for Israel. They are world-acknowledged experts. And in discussing a resilience, they actually shared something which I know already in my heart. And that is that part of survival is, if you will, getting through. It's, it's been careful, it's shopping and cooking and spending money and, and doing all the necessary day-to-day -day things with proper caution, of course, with all necessary uh, health measures. Uh, we need to do all that, of course. But we also need to be Nevi'im. We need all of us at this time to be prophets. And by that I mean we will not only survive, but we can flourish if we have the uh, courage and the faith and also the insistence and the impatience of the biblical prophets to, to try to start discovering and sharing with each other what we want to create on the other side of all of this. My colleagues in Israel call this time a gesher me'ached. Gesher me'ached means a unifying bridge between what was before the trauma 
and what, God willing, what we envision for afterwards. So we need, I think, to really ask ourselves, what is the individual talent, the teaching, the heritage that you have that you can bring more boldly to our community after this is over to help us create a richer community of blessing and instruction? How can we make uh, our synagogue a house as Isaiah imagines, that will call out to all people, all people as we've been together affected by this pandemic, all people regardless of their spiritual background or their Hebrew literacy. And finally, how will we ensure fairness and opportunity and human rights and health for everyone in this country and not just people who can meet the market price. Spiritual life is essentially paradoxical. And I think the paradox of this pandemic is that it, it is uh, in precisely the time when we feel most isolated and most constricted that we also have the opportunity to think and imagine in a very, very large and all-encompassing way. I hope to continue that vision, that exploration with you over Sfira as we count up to Torah and Mitzvot on Sinai. For now, have a wonderful Shabbat. We continue with Baruch Hu, the call to prayer on page 39. Please rise as you're able. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamborach. Baruch Adonai Amorach Le'olam Ba'ed You may be seated. Baruch Adonai Hinamilchah Ma'avir yom me'vi'in layla Ma'avdil bin yom ve'in layla Adonai tzvaot shemo Ha'uchai v'kayam Tamid imloch aleinu le'olam ba'ed Baruch Adonai Hamari v'aravim Page 40 Ahabat olam beit Yisrael lamachavta Torah mitzvot chukim mishpatim motanu limadta Al kein nadonai eloheinu b'shochveinu v'kumeinu nasiach b'chukecha v'nismach b'rivrei Torah techa Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta het Adonai Elohecha V'chol levavcha v'chol nefshecha v'chol meodecha V'hayu hadbarim ha'eila Asher arochim atzavcha hayom alvavcha We continue together on page forty four. Malchuto b'ratzon kiblu aleihem Moshe Miriam b'nei Yisrael lechad nushira b'simchara ba v'amru chulam 
מי כמוך בעינים אדוני, מי כמוך נדר בקודש, נורא תהילות אוסף אלה. מלכותך ראו בניך בוקע ים לפני משה. זה אלי אנו ואמרו אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד ונאמר כי פדע אדוני את יעקב וגאלו מיד חזק ממנו ברוך אתה אדוני גל ישראל השכיבנו אדוני We continue now with Hashki Venu on page 45. Hashki Venu is a prayer for peace and protection. Uh, we pause now to remember all those who are suffering from this pandemic and those who are uh, fighting to control it. We send our Nechama, first of all, our consolation to the so many who have suffered bereavement, who have lost loved ones because of COVID-19. We send prayers for Rufuat HaNefesh, Rufuat HaGuf, physical and spiritual healing to those who are now ill. We pray for Parnasa V'chavod, for a speedy, abundant, and honorable livelihood for the millions who are now unemployed, or needy, or hungry, or homeless, or facing hunger and homelessness because of the pandemic. And we pray for Chizuk, for strength and health to those in the medical and other essential professions so that they and their families can go on with strength and healing and so bring strength and health to others. Please join me the first half and we'll pray in English, page 45, and conclude in Hebrew. <clears throat> Allow us, Adonai, our God, to sleep peacefully. Awaken us to life, O Sovereign, Spread over us your canopy of peace. Restore us with your good counsel. And save us for the sake of your name. Shield us. Remove from us enemies, pestilence, sword, starvation, and sorrow. Remove the evil forces that surround us. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings. For you, Adonai, watch over and deliver us. For you, God, are sovereign, merciful, and compassionate. Ushmor seitenu voenu, lechayimu shalom meyatavi adolam, ufros alenu sukat shalomecha, baruch ata adonai, hapare sukat shalom alenu, v'al kol amo Yisrael, v'al Yerushalayim. Amen. We continue now, we'll take moments of silence uh, to pray the Amidah, which was on 47 to 52 in the Lev Shalem. Uh, please pray in uh, Hebrew and English or the language of your own heart. We rise uh, 47 for the silent Amidah.
Uh, please join me. We uh, conclude with Alenu, page uh, 56. Alenu l'shaveach l'adon hakol, l'atet gedula l'yotzer breshit, shelo asanu kegoye haratzot, velo samanu kemishpechot adama, shelo sam chalkenu kahem, vigor alenu kechol hamonam, v'anachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, Lifne Melech, Malche Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Kakatu Batoratecha, Adonai Imloch, Leolam, Vaed, Vene Emar, Vehaya Adonai, Lemelech, Alkon Haaretz, Vayomahu, Vayomahu. Gia Adonai Echad, Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo Echad. Those mourning and those observing yard site continue with Mourners Kaddish 58. Yitgadal v'yitgadash Shemei Rabbah. Ve'oma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon uv'yomechon Ufraye de Hol Veit Israel, Vagala Uvisman Kari Vimru, Amen. Yehesh me Raba Mevorach, Leolam Olome Olmaya, Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Vit Paar, Vit Romam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Halal, Shemay de Kudisha, Brichu, Leela, Minkol, Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Pechata, Venechamata, Da Amiran Biolma, the Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Raba, Min Shemaya, the Chaim Alenu, the Alcon, Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. Ose Shalom, Bimromav, who Yase Shalom, Alenu, the Alcon, Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. Uh, we wish you and your families a uh, Shabbat Shalom, a Shabbat of rest and tranquility and joy. Um, we are beginning, uh, we'll be back next week, of course. We have Minyan uh, Sunday morning at 9. The Zoom link, link is available through the synagogue. We have, uh, again, next uh, Friday night at 6 o'clock, and we are beginning next week, April 25th, Parshat Tazriya Mitzvah. We'll be beginning a uh, Shabbat morning uh, service um, at uh, 9.30. Shabbat Shalom. We can... Continue and we conclude with Yigdal on 62. Yigdal Elohim Chai Ve'yishtabach Nimtza Ve'ne Etel Metziyuto Echad Ve'en Yachid Ke'yichodo Nelam Ve'gam Etzof Le'achtuto E'en Lo Temuta Guf E'en O Guf Lo Naru Chelav Kedushato Kadmon Bechol Shabbos.